am Jerelle, Madam Cacti. Welcome to my greenhouse. The Cactus Queen, the Princess of Pollination, the Arbiter of Astrophytum, Jarell is unparalleled in the field of propagating this genus of little round cacti. And today, she's going to share some of her best secrets with us. Astrophytum has been cultivated and hybridized for like at least 50 years. It started in Japan and then we have different cultivars now. So today I'm going to share with you a little bit of learning about um, hybridization. Astrophytum uh, genus has uh, six known species. So we have Asterias, Coelens, Caput Medusa. This is Capricorn, Ornatum, and Myristigma. So within the genus, there is like a compatibility factor that you have to consider when doing hybridization. Not all are compatible to each other. Astrophytum uh, Caput Medusa is sterile to all other uh, species in the genus. So it won't make seeds if you cross Caput Medusa to the rest of the five species. So compatibility between the five remaining species is um, Astrophytum, Asterias, Capricorn, and Coelens. These three guys here, they are more related to each other. So they are easy to cross. So if you cross Capricorn to Asterias, the success rate is very good. You're going to have a good yield. The cultivar called ASCAP, meaning Asterias cross, cross with Capricorn, because this is a sex one. And then we also see in the market too, or in cultivation, a cross between Coelens and Asterias, which is a good one too. So this three here is, you can really cross them three easily. And then the other two plants here, this is the mirror stigma and this is ornatum. You can cross these two here. Um, the yield is low, but it's still doable. But these two is so compatible with each other. It's like genetically, they're more related. But so surprising though, because look at the look of the coelent and mirror stigma. They're almost the same, but if you take a look about like um, genetic structure, coelent is more related to Asterias and Capricorn more than Mirio Stigma. Is this is the same species in the same genus? It's both Asterias. After we pollinate the plant. Um, it's also uh, a good thing to properly label them. The offspring, which is F1, meaning the first generation, is gonna be called um, Asterias Supercabotol Cross Nudum. And, and this one is gonna be called Astrophytum Asterias Nudum Cross, cross uh, Supercabotol. So you have to write first the uh, mother plant, then cross it with the pollen donor, which is the father plant. So um, just to show you an example about um, a successful intraspecific hybridization is this one here. So if you take a look at the characteristic of these two species, these are both Astrophytum. So this one is Astrophytum Asterias cultivar B type. And this one is Astrophytum asterias cultivar star shape super cabotol. So, so this is now Astrophytum asterias super cabotol with the B type. I'll continue to to improve the existing uh, desirable traits or phenotype. This is how hybridization progresses over the years. So, this is the example of. Astrophytum asterias that is has a native look. So Astrophytum asterias is has a globus form. It has a uh, aerials and it has a uh, more or less like eight ribs, number of ribs, and 
it has the known um, trichome patterning, which is the genus of Cerphytum as, uh, is known for. So look at this one. This is super kabuto. This calls for bigger trichomes around the body. So this is very popular among um, Astrophytum collector is the fascination about trichome patterning. And another variation for trichome patterning is also the V formation of the trichome patterning. And another example for variation also is the shape. The shape is supposedly um, round, but this is a star shape. And the star shape Asterias, this is the nudum cultivar, which is the green skin, the absence of the trichome patterning. And this is the one that has the trichome patterning in it. And then it level up to the super kabuto kind, which is now carries those amazing trichome patterning. And then it carries the V type too. So star shape. So this is the example of a series that it just keep going and going and going. And this is a separation under aerials. It has a line design or something like that. So as to find a series earlier, I mentioned that it has like at least eight ribs. This one is has like multiple ribs, like at least 10. Um, this one has 13 ribs over here. And it's a super kabuto. So, and another popular variation for ribs is the Kiko cultivar. So it has like a section of ribs cut into the different three or more sections and it looks like a turtle shell. So this is called Kiko cultivar. And then they were able to, uh, Japanese people were able to work on this more and it became this, like the, the the section is more sharp like uh, the rib edges is more like more on a bumpy side and this one is a lizard skin this is also a Kiko cultivar under ribs and this is another Kiko cultivar that's called the muscle type which is the bigger and bulkier kind of like like a muscle thing and this is the super kabuto Kiko and under the variation of the aerial, we have Renzii. The aerial is so close to each other. Instead of just the normal separated aerials, this one is so close to each other. And they also, Japanese people also were able to make the aerials bigger. So this is called Ooibo, the big aerials. This one here, there's like popping all over. So this cultivar is called Proliferum. So this is the tendency of the plant to produce pops from the aerials. And we have weird stuff here too, like two-headed uh, Kikos. This is Astrophytum Asterias cultivar, super kabuto, star-shaped. Hanazono. In Japanese literature, Hanazono is a flower garden. So it has aerials all over the body. At the same time, this, this, this plant is a Hanaizumi. Hanaizumi meaning there's like three aerials in one aerial node. It's like three or four aerials or five aerials in one aerial node. So that cultivar is called Hanai. Zoomy. I don't know if I have uh, this one here. This is the better um, look for Hanaizumi. So this is a Hanaizumi plant here. Like the aerials is just clumping aerials. So it has a tendency to flower like give like three or more flower in the aerial node. And it will never end. We're gonna be a uh, Talking about astrophytum like all day and not having enough time, but astrophytum is really an exciting plant to care for and to learn about. Like and subscribe and follow East Austin Succulents and Fireproof Plants on Instagram.